Here's what I know. When you've lost your way, it's easy to lie about the hard truths. My name is First Cross, and I've done some simple things. I'd like to think they were for the right reasons. But the way to hell is paved with good intentions. So if you're going to drive that road, you better be damn sure you take a good ride. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Independent Comic Book Days, Episode 9. Uh, I'm Graham Nolan, your host, and today we're looking at uh, Carl Waller and D.G. Chichester's Axel's Infernal. Uh, this is a really cool-looking project, as you can tell from that really neat uh, trailer. And uh, welcome, and welcome, Carl. Graham, thank you for having us on tonight, uh, and uh, this is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to this uh, conversation and the, the chance to uh, to shill our book. <laughs> <laughs> well, hopefully tonight we'll get some eyeballs on it. I'm looking so, forward to it. Tell us about um, uh, this project. You know, first, give us the elevator pitch for this bad boy. Uh, I'll do the elevator pitch, and I'll let Carl do a little bit of the background. Okay, elevator pitch is... Um, Hell exists, but there's not just one hell. There's many hells, right? As there are in history. There's hells across Egypt and the Aztecs and the Mesopotamians and the Vikings. Everybody's had a hell. And uh, and these hells desperately want to be believed in. So what they've done is they've enlisted something called the Underworld Transportation Authority to literally deliver hell on earth, have a damnation delivery service. But these truckers that bring it to hell are staffed by earthly sinners. And our heroine, Percy Cross, who you see right there, is uh, press ganged, is recruited into service by this UTA uh, to be one of their truckers on a possessed rig called Smoke and Sammy. And she gets teamed up with Virgil Shift, who's a veteran driver, as she's trying to get out of this literal deal with the devil that she's been forced to make. And uh, and it's a, it's a really tale of bizarre uh, hells, strange adventures, a really kind of fiendish dusk till dawn um, meets the good place, meets army of darkness, uh, grindhouse uh, uh, adventure. So it's a real supernatural thriller with lots of twists and turns. And uh, we've been working on it for a while. We're, we're really excited to get it out here with this first issue, which is the beginning of what we hope will be a, a first five issue storyline and then uh, ongoing stories after that. Well, it sounds really cool. Uh, just the comparisons to the the films that you said is, is the mashup type. Uh, it sounds really cool, and and Carl's artwork is really dynamic and amazing here. Thanks. Uh, Dan and I met working. We were paired up working on a dark horse project called Motorhead back in what nineteen ninety six, and sure. in another century. Another yeah. <laughs> Old enough, but true. <laughs> not so old that everybody was in black and white. We were still in color then. And uh, that matchup came when they, when Dark Horse approached Tim Bradstreet about an artist. And Tim suggested me, because Tim was familiar with me through uh, doing work for TSR mm. and just gaming work in general. Um, so Dan got to meet me over the phone. And when the comics world imploded, which is right around what ninety seven, <laughs> which, which implosion? Yeah, exactly. You got to keep track <laughs> of these things. The initial big implosion where it dropped by like what half? It went from an eight hundred million dollar year industry to a four hundred. When back when Dark Horse was trying to do their Dark Horse world, mm -hmm. and uh, so Dan and I got we'd originally we're going to have a twelve issue commitment. 
from Dark Horse, and that dropped down to what eight? And yeah. sure, well, that. Go ahead. I, I was just going to say, but the the positive thing about it is we had such a great time working together that we wanted to do something else. So, I I emailed Dan one time and I said, "Hey, what about a story about two dudes driving trucks in hell?" That's it. Mm -hmm. uh, because I'm thinking like an artist, not a writer, and I'm going, "Hey, I could draw really cool shit." You know, I I could draw Japanese hell. I could draw Navajo hell. I, this could be neat. And my whole idea was it was actually a bit more of a funny, like a comedy kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And then I, I heard crickets for Dan from like forever. <laughs> and that's because something hit him and he accelerated. And he hit me with a story proposal, proposal where he took the whole thing and completely blew it up. Because Dan's far more literary than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm not but a simple pirate. And he changed the sex of one of the drivers. It was going to be female. And he wanted to do a story that was a story with a beginning, a middle, and an, a definite end. And everybody, any any of Dan's pro friends who read this prospectus were like, F you for coming up with this. Why didn't I do it first? Then life happened. And... Dan fell out of comics and was doing ad work. I fell out of the whole world. And this thing just kind of sat there. Uh, then a few years back, Dan contacts me on Facebook. And uh, I give him my phone number. And he calls and he says, hey, I want to do something. I don't care what it is. And I said, I know damn good and well what you want to work on. Because <laughs> I had never, it was always in the back of my mind because it's such a cool idea. And uh, in a way, it has turned out to be better because 23, 24 years past, we're very different people, maturity-wise. And as we stream for yourself, <laughs> all right, as we, you know, I'm no longer in diapers. And as we stream these emails back and forth like stream of consciousness, this has turned into a much better project than if we had tried to get it out in the late 90s. So it's really exciting. I, I get these five scripts for five issues from Dan. And a lot of people would look at this and go, holy crap, how do I draw this? But when Dan hands me scripts, I read it and go, how do I choose how to draw this? Because his, his scripts give me so many different ideas that I have to narrow it down. So, you know, Dan is the the writer. He did this, he does the structure. He's the editorial muscle. I just pepper him with little bits like, hey, can we have her chew her nails? Uh, Dan was wanting her to, you know, it would be cool if she studied dance. I said, how about ballet? Because then I could have her visually, I could draw her as graceful as possible. And she could be standing there in like an unconscious ballet pose. I throw little stuff like that, but this story's dance. So with that, I hand it over to Dan. I think what Carl's trying to say is I I'm, I overwrite the scripts. I, I basically think that's where he's going with this. No. Um, but uh, I remember it does a little bit different. I'm going to go with it because it's clean. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I told you I was having troubles with my internet and it just crapped out on me. Did we lose you totally? Like, you know, I, I thought I should like vanish. You I were gone. gone. We were running the show. We've we've Good. we've doubled the subscriber base here. It's this just, is, you know, this is why you guys are pros. I, I sent lots of people to your Kickstarter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you look cleaner now. You look like you're uh yeah. you're uh oh, I, you're I took wi fi up. You know, I had time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Stepped away for a little bit. <laughs> You ran off stage. There, there, were, there were a few expletives, uh, which I'm, I'm hoping that did not come across. <laughs> no, no, it's still a clean no, show. We, we, didn't, we didn't ruin it for you. Oh, uh, well, my show's never clean, so uh, it must have been ruined. <laughs> but I okay. think, um, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, uh, I just want to, uh, oh, let me just uh, share the, uh, oh, when I got locked out. I got to share the screen again. 
There we go. Okay. Um, let's go over the campaign a little bit and, and, and see what you guys are offering. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of great stuff here. I think it's great stuff. And everybody who sees it seems to think it's uh, it's reasonably priced, as they say at Walmart. Um, so, of course, you're getting uh, the opportunity to, to um, see the backstory, you know, some of which Carl described here. If you scroll through all this and look at all these words, you got creative creds. We've actually done stuff. We got some interesting stretch goals. We're almost at the 4K one where everybody gets a Dean Cotts who did our variant cover. Uh, gets a free mini poster. Um, if we get to five and a half, um, uh, we do a dramatic script reading, or I do a dramatic script reading, and Carl probably interjects with lots of uh, boozy comments. Um, but uh, uh, you know, in the main tier, the main you know sleeve here, we're obviously showing off lots of stuff. We show off uh, again lots of Carl's great artwork. But as we get into the rewards, um, you can start off with a digital copy. We didn't do international shipping. This one out uh, was sort of backed off on some advice uh, on that. But if you are an international fan or interested in this, the digital copy is a great way to get in on this internationally. Um, there's also a version of the digital one which will come with my script integrated into it. So we'll we'll create a special PDF that'll have both the story full on and uh the script not quite page by page because there was a little flex in how we did it but you'll be able to sort of like look back and forth and get a sense of those descriptions and and a little bit of more of the backstory which is kind of a neat way to to sometimes see a comparison of things i think that's uh, a really great idea and i may steal that because please uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I stole it from somebody else and i said yeah. man that's so cool yeah like, wouldn't, didn't you always want to see that when you were just yeah. reading comics even now i want to see that yeah. i look at you know your stuff or look at other people's stuff. So how do they put that together? Um, so See, I'll offer, to... I, I'll, I'll offer a, uh, an ash can of the layout. Mm -hmm. uh, like I, right. I, in Alamo, I did one with the layouts and then my uh, my notations and script. Oh, that's cool. On the other side. So you could see it. Uh, right. I would evolve the layout from the from my initial idea. because it's, yeah. it's very flexible, you know, when you're the artist writer. Totally. Totally. Yeah. But, that's um, great. That's really cool. Yeah, that'll be a fun one to do. What you'll be um, able to see, though, is if you read it, is where I begin to deviate. <laughs> Dan, Dan's cool. He writes uh, a script. He'll hand, it, hand a script to me, and it'll be written for, like, 17 pages because <clears throat> he knows I'm going to Or he knows maybe I want to add a panel to, to tweak storytelling a little more. Mm -hmm. And we have 24 pages to play. Mm -hmm. So the people will read, and then they'll look at the page and go, "Wait a minute, that ain't it." And I said, "Well, that's part of the charm." So, well, remember what what Eisner said: when the script gets to the artist, it's the artist's story. Exactly. You know, then it comes back. <laughs> but we did have an agreement that way, which was good up front. You know, I wrote it even if you know the beginning of it says, um, you know, eighteen pages of script for actually at one point for a twenty-page comic. Carl, you know, want it like that two pages of flexibility. Ultimately, we took a little bit more flexibility, but we knew going in that we wanted to have that flex. And sometimes that worked out really well. And mm -hmm. sometimes it um, it changed up things a little bit, made it better. And sometimes we had to kind of step back uh, and discuss, all right, where is this taking us? Um, uh, mm -hmm. and, and there would be, a, but there was always a good creative dialogue back and forth on there. That's so um, there's cool holographic stickers. You know, you can get a great, great, um, you know, little uh, sticker. The logo is designed by Comic Craft. Richard Starkings uh, oh, nice. helped us out with that, which is uh, um, I said, I want something I want to tattoo on me. I haven't quite gotten the tattoo yet. Uh, when we get to uh, sixty seven hundred dollars, I'll tattoo it. Um, <laughs> um, there's a he great. He said that out loud, people. So. I said that out loud, people. I didn't say which where I tattoo it, but uh, do the readers um, can pitch, pick which cheek? Pick which cheek. <laughs> um, there's a great mini poster, like it's about a seven by ten uh, mini poster. That um, uh, there's a bigger image of that on the uh, on the main sleeve of things there. So um, really reasonably priced, I think. Um, if you want to up your copy to an autographed copy, uh, the print version. Uh, there's a version of that where Carl and I will autograph it uh, uh, together. So that's a, a little bit more, but you get a, uh, uh, our autographs. That's a great um, deal, 25 bucks for an autograph plus the digital. 
I know, I know, from both of us, no less. You wouldn't be able to walk out of a convention with money in your pocket like again from this campaign. That's right. Um, uh, we've got now, uh, as I said, Dean Kotz uh, came in and did a um, a variant cover for us. I think that's next in the uh, in the queue there. So there's oh, yeah. a variant cover, which is pretty wild. We did for the classic. Um, there you go. The classic demon Necros Terminal is the dispatcher from hell who sort of runs the trucking route for North America. And uh, so we did one of the fun little, uh, you know, uh, everybody's in the puppet string sort of thing, which you can get Dean's cover. And there's actually another offer, um, I think one or two down, where you can get a two for one. So for a slightly discounted price, you can get both Carl's cover and Dean's cover. There um, it is. There it is. So that's not bad, 30 for both. Um, you get all media package, which was just above, which is the mini poster, the comic, the digital, and the sticker. Uh, so that's uh, another uh, fun if you want a little bit of everything. Mm -hmm. uh, below the double one, we start to kind of move up a little bit uh, in the rankings, if you will. But um, there is a chance to be a producer. So I'm not. We're not giving you the the rights to tell us what to do. <laughs> but we are saying. You know, instead of backer, you're a producer. Uh, so you're, it's a chance for you to sort of show an, an extra level of of support. Uh, you not only get yourself listed in the book, you get a personalized autograph from me and Carl. Uh, you get um, a couple other little extras like that to uh, to be included uh, in your package there. And a little further on, you can actually be an executive producer. So an executive producer is, uh, is only going to be two of those. And you'll get a bigger listing and some other uh, goodies. But this, Carl, why don't you talk about the sketches you've been working on? Yeah, because this is a, a nice uh, package here. Uh, hmm. I have been, in case there's been way too many people wanting sketches, I've been kind of doing them in advance. And I don't know how well this will translate. Let me pull a little stunt with the lighting just a bit. I'll put you up big on solo layout. But I've been working this stuff up, and what I tend to do is, and a lot of sketches of Percy, it'll have Percy, it'll have, uh, let's get a little further back. That's going to cross pretty well. That's good. Yeah, a little closer, a little closer. Oh, there, there you go. Okay. There you go. Okay. And uh, these are just kind of roughs. And then uh, what I'll do is I, I'm running them off on Bristol as lightly as possible. And uh, they'll be pretty tight pencil drawings. And one thing I'm probably going to do, and people can know that they have something else really cool, is that these are turning out so well, I may take them and add, while they'll have the pencil originals, I may have them colored as prints so I can be at conventions and have something to sell. Mm -hmm. And uh, they know they've got the original. If they meet me at the con, you know, they could buy a print to go along with the original that they've already bought. Very nice. Very so, nice. Doing that kind of stuff. Good. Dennis, okay. thank you. Hal thank Dennis you. is thank already you. in. Got the order of print and digital copy. All right, man. Thank you. It is. It is fantastic. Uh, we're having a good time with it. Well done, Dennis. Thank you, thank and, you, thank you. And when you do get that that original sketch, you also get the, uh, you know, as Dennis just right there did, you get the print copy and the uh, and the digital copy as well. Um, so you now, have a retailer we love, discount pack. Yeah, we love our retailers uh, and uh, store owners. So if you're a store owner and you want the retailer pack, um, you can get ten copies of the of the print comic of uh, Carl's cover. Uh, with, uh, I believe, autographs from us uh, for, uh, you know, for one price, slightly below, you know, uh, if you were to do them all individually. Um, those will not be personally delivered, but they will have our personal touch on them. So uh, except for that one store in Connecticut that ordered it already, and I'll, I'll bring them to those personally. Uh, <laughs> now, um we also have a great gallery, um, and maybe I'll put that in the in the chat here. I've got a Pinterest gallery of all the original pages, the 11 by 17 pages of Carl's black and white art. Carl, why don't you talk up this one too, because this is a, a big, big draw in terms of your uh, your work. 
Uh, all the pages that are complete, the first issue took a little time to put together for me and I kept making some changes. So some of the pages aren't up there and that's because they were in pieces and done in pieces, regrettably. But these are there. Uh, also, I have, there's a double page up there. And there's also a, like from the cutting room floor, double page spread that we could probably talk about in a minute. Uh, and actually the pages I do are actually a little bit larger. They're 12 by, I'm 12 by 18 first. So uh -huh. uh, a lot of ink work happening there. Um, do you work uh, uh, you, you work uh, traditionally, right? Not not digitally. I am a luddite. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. And I I have a very nice twenty four inch Cintiq behind me that I've paid off, and I still approach it like the cavemen in the beginning of two thousand and one. <laughs> so I need to start learning how to do that, how to use it. But I'm also kind of still turned on by the idea of producing original art that people can get mm -hmm. and hold, you know, and, yep. and put up on their wall. So another reason why I still maintain, you know, my, yeah. my actual physical drawing skills. That spread you just uh, scrolled past, Graham, I think that's kind of an interesting creative, like, backstory, um, which uh, is when we the first pass through the book, there's a big reveal, you know, that's what spreads are for, right? They're a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. and, um, so there's a big reveal as we unleash what this this whole hell is really about and what she's getting into. And um, for one reason or another, as we got to this particular visualization of it, Carl sent it to me and um, and it didn't didn't sing for me, right? It wasn't like sinking in the right way. everything that everything else I'd seen, I sort of felt like it really had worked. Um, but this is something, Carl, I think you'll admit you've kind of held back on for a long time because you didn't feel ready to do it um but i think what happened was when we finally saw it while it's a perfectly really strong image it didn't deliver in exactly the way that we wanted for the book so it took some rethinking um and retooling on the way that i was representing it i think even in words to get to a new place but this represents sort of the alternate cut of it you know the alternate cut of this big this big moment in the story so it's not the actual spread that's in the comic but it's an alternate reality um you know version of it so it's kind of being offered as a as a special mm -hmm. if somebody's really interested in seeing uh, something that way i love this page right here uh uh because there's some great angles great dynamics mm -hmm. and i particularly like the uh, expressions on the faces they're very animated um like this guy down here at the bottom uh that looks awesome i and that really is like to push perspective like yep. mm -hmm. to compensate you know for maybe not being as good at it as i should be so i push it <laughs> and it's it's given my stuff a bit of a unique sort of feel mm -hmm. now oh, who's who colored all this uh, that would be a friend of mine named Wesley Wong. Uh, Wesley Wong? Yep. Okay. You can, his website is uh, Wes Wong with you. Well, so like, Wes, Wes Wong with you. <laughs> yeah. You know, working on, on what's wrong with you, but Wes, Wes Wong with you. And I met him through a mutual friend. Uh a recent job he just colored was DC just put out a beautiful, large Wonder Woman project that was like almost a history of Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. uh, amazingly illustrated and Wesley did colors on it. And uh, Wesley's, Wes, I like Wesley's color sense. And he, his first pass at the colors, he did this very beautiful, very, typical kind of comic job, which everybody seems to want now, mm -hmm. where everything is very polished and very perfect. And and I got it and I was kind of like, uh, and I got back with him, I said, Wesley, man, color outside the lines. So treat this, I said, use the way you use color, pick your colors, but 
color this like you're hitting it with a watercolor brush mm -hmm. and let the stuff go outside the lines because my inking is so tight and so anal that maybe we need some slop. And he sent back three sketch pages that just blew my socks off because it had this Euro vibe to it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, holy crap, that's it. And so Wesley had the vibe. And Dan and I had discussed handling colors. And I had suggested to him, what if we color keyed stuff? You know, like when you're in the Matrix and everything's got that green cast. Mm -hmm. So you know you're in the Matrix. Mm -hmm. I said, what about a, not green, but a color cast where you know you're in hell? And then Dan came back with, how about while they're in hell, the colors are dialed up to 11? I was like, yeah. And so we're deliberately having Wesley color the Earth stuff in a much lower key. Because Earth is kind of the bummer, and Hell is where we're really interested. <laughs> this uh, well, this yeah, really gets into uh, psychological like problems yeah, I have. Yeah. Now, so it's I love that stuff. I love when the colors talk. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, I'm thrilled to have Wesley working on this. He's a really cool dude. Well, he did a really great job. I like the muted colors. Um, and as you said, there's like a watercolor feel, feel like this yeah. guy's shirt here where you're getting bits of orange and yellow coming through. Um, yeah. uh, and it focuses your eye like the child in her hand. Wesley makes me look good. And so. Well, hey, you know what? When you work with people, that's all you can ask for. Make me look good. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. It's so true. That's what Chuck Dixon used to say. You know, do what you want with the script. Just make me look like a genius. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it yeah yeah um it's a sound advice so um like i said there's executive producer there were some early bird discounts those are gone um there's some add-on rewards i don't know if you can click through to the add-ons i'm not sure if those show up or you have to like pick something but if you pick something and then there's add-ons there is uh um there are stickers some great stickers uh, and then you can also, if you choose, want to add on that that script with the PDF, mm -hmm. uh, or like the the three or four different add-ons mm -hmm. that folks can, you know, choose a reward and then just get some additional, you know, pieces there. So uh, right. I think it's a pretty good mix of, um, you know, the expected with a little, uh, uh, a couple little extra bonuses, you know, that you seem to respond to well, Graham. Like that PDF with the script is a, maybe a little surprise, but. Uh, mm -hmm. We didn't go too overboard uh, because it was our first one, but we thought it was a good mix of uh, opportunity and and a decent price point for folks to kind of come in on and and uh, and still contend with all the things you have to contend with, like how much does it cost to print and how much does it cost to ship and and the fact we wanted to pay everybody um, uh, their rates. You know, we wanted to pay uh, you know Wes a decent rate. Pap Rousseau is our letterer. And Pat's a great, uh, great guy and a great letterer. So we want to make sure we were paying him fairly. Um, so we're, you know, we're happy that we've been able to reward everybody in the right way. But we're just uh, uh, trying to balance that out with everything else right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, what? Uh, how, how much of the book is done at this point? Done. So done. It can't be more done. Oh, yeah. It so is totally. When your campaign ends, you will be ready for fulfillment. Yes, we just we just have to lay it out in. Um, it's not in design, but it's Affinity Publisher, which is a similar um, you know program. So I've got it uh, partly laid out in there. We need to do a little tweaking with the credits and the covers, depending on the say somebody's a producer, an executive producer. Um, but it is totally illustrated, inked, colored, lettered, um, covers. Everything is set to kind of go to the printer uh, as almost as soon as possible so well this so is you finished that, guys, when you back this you're not waiting a year for nope. it to get uh, done nope. it'll be within a month probably you know yeah uh, the we're, we're aiming for uh december fulfillment um and it would probably be you know certainly the digital folks will get that a little bit ahead of time yeah um but then um just because as you know there's some unforeseen things sometimes with uh you know production and um Mm -hmm. and so forth and then carl and i have to coordinate on the um 
uh, you know, some of the original art stuff and the signatures and so forth. Sure. But because uh, he's in a uh, little distance from me. <laughs> and, uh, uh, but, um, but you know, it shouldn't be. Yeah, we don't want this to be uh, a long stretch. If we're asking people to kind of get on board with us, which we are, and we want this to be part of a of a of a longer run, we want to keep everybody uh, happy and involved, so that we have that chance to kind of move on to two and three and so forth. Mm -hmm. And let's see how many days we got left on this. I think we're at eight. Uh, no, seven. Yeah, seven. Seven days. days. Okay. So, so you guys, got, you got a week to get on board and back this thing. Um, yep. I hope everybody will share uh, this link on your uh, social media so we can get some eyeballs on it. Totally. Um, are you guys doing other shows to get the word out? Or um, we did. I've been doing interview a go go. Uh, <laughs> so um, I've been uh, on quite a few different podcasts, and then I'm taking advantage of the fact. Uh, I'm doing this Daredevil uh, series at the moment. So um, I'm booking myself with Daredevil and then selling myself uh, with this. Okay. <laughs> Do a little bait and switch in some of the podcasts, but it's good. Well, it's been very uh, positive. This one you own. <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, you do. You own this, right? Uh, this? Yeah, no, straight up. This is all That's what I'm saying. Is this one you own? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. So uh, nobody's going to tell us what to do. And if we, fall over Ooh, it's our fault but i don't think we'll fall over everybody who's seen it has really liked it it it, it looks great uh there's no reason this thing you know uh isn't up at uh, you know thirty thousand right now um it's 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 about getting the word out and 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 getting people jazzed up about it you know that's the trick right and 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 whatever combination of things you make you can do to make that happen. That's what we're doing, you know. We're, right. And thank you again for having us on to to do this. That's part of it. Um, uh, but, but you never know what people see. I mean, that's the, the 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 tricky, stupid thing about the online world and algorithms and everything else. Mm -hmm. I had a guy who I've known for quite some time just uh, text me the other day. Hey, I just saw your project. Yeah. You know, it, it had nine days to go, and I've been, you know, a shameless beast about, you know, promoting. The you know, with multiple posts and videos and, and such per day, but I don't know who sees it. You know, you just have to keep the fire hose open. Yeah. Keep it, keep well, it I mean, if, if you're, if you're relying on Facebook, uh, no, uh, right. I mean, like, like you said, I mean, I had a project up last time, uh, and it was up like a month and I was posting on it every single day. And Chuck Dixon, <laughs> says, of all people, no, I just saw, hey. I just saw you launch, right. you know, and, we interact all the time, so right. you think the algorithms would send it to him, but it didn't. No, so that's somebody right. You're actually in contact with all the time, and you know well, and have worked with, mm -hmm. and you're hey, Graham. You got another sale, on my friend Nick Capello. Yep. And thank so, you for this super chat, Nick. Yeah, I I don't. It's not a quality issue. It's an no. eyeballs. It's an eyeballs thing. Yeah, so. and, and that's what it comes down to. Um, is, is getting the word out and we got seven more days um, yes. to, to get some more people uh, on this thing and uh, um, I encourage all you guys to uh, to check this out you know with independent showcase I get a lot of people that want to do stuff here but mm -hmm. I have a level of quality that I I gatekeep on, you know, because I don't want to recommend something to somebody and say, oh, yeah, Graham recommended it on a show and then you get right. it and it's crap. Right. So, you know, I'm very careful about what I'm going to show. So when I tell you this is a good project by good guys, trust me on it. It's good and you'll like it. So you should go out and back it. Definitely. And we respect that, Graham. And, and thank you for that. Um, Thanks. Uh, and I think that's. Um, you know, that's the other reason we wanted to finish the book, you know, before kind of unleashing it was uh, to make good on the fact, you know, we have something of a reputation and mm -hmm. and we know how to put this together and we want to deliver something to people. So I think it's uh, uh, there's certainly a, a lot they can get out of it in terms of the story. There's a lot they can get out of it in terms of the quality of the work. Uh, you know, we've, we picked some we think decent, uh, a decent printer. Uh, the production itself, you know, should be pretty sharp. And um, everybody uh, uh, should have a fun, uh, hellish uh, read for Christmas almost, <laughs> you know, in terms of timing and everything.
But what what's always killed me about this when I first got the scripts back from Dan, we were discussing it was hell is UPS FedEx DHL <laughs> delivering and they have to deliver. You know, and it's just there's an insane aspect to that that I really enjoy. So yeah, it ain't right. Ooh, and one of those big. No, 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 I think Graham is either like focusing so much, or he's he's frozen. I think he's focusing. Uh oh, it's me and you, Carl. All right, power, absolute power. The power back again. Yes. The show just continues to run. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, you know, I can feel the hate. Good, let it flow through you. Let's take this over. Run it. Different. That's a different show. Um, <laughs> anyway. I could interview you if you so desire. Um, you could. You could ask questions. Go for it. What did you want to know about this, this series, Carl? Well, it's planned to have a beginning and a middle and end of an end. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Graham's back. I keep getting show. Bounced, bounced out of my own show. It's oh it's amazing. God. We I'm, again I'm we took good care of it. We kept it warm. We're gonna send money for Graham's in it. Where can I send money? <laughs> I wanted I wanted there to be blood, but no, you know, Dan keeps me under control. <laughs> oh Lord. All right. So okay, guys. Well, this is a great project. Uh thanks for thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh everybody, well, let's say hi to who who is in the chat here first. Uh, yeah. welcome them. Uh and if you have any questions for uh Dan or Carl, you know, toss them up there. Hit, it, hit us up. Yeah. Uh, Chris Juliano is in here. Jake Blues. Richie Dupe. Norn Red 2. Spambot. Kevin Thomas. We got a good crowd here. Kel Razor. Yeah, I did reboot my router. It didn't work. Uh, I'm going to have to do it again, I think. Um, oh, Kevin Thomas says, loved your time on Daredevil. Uh, DG, you and Link you. made a great team. Not enough we people did. talk about. We did. Thank you. Uh, and Nick, uh, I see a question there. Does the old media package include the script uh, uh, version of the PDF? No, that one does not. That is that is the um, the regular PDF. But you could choose that level and then do the add-on uh, for the script. Uh, which I think will, you'll come out a little better on. So if you want to check that out, you can get, um, you know, I would just swap out. We would just swap out the regular PDF for the script PDF. And uh, I have a signal booster too. And I rebooted that today too. <laughs> so I think the issue is with my uh, provider. I'm going to have to call them tomorrow. Technology is our friend. Uh, is it? Uh, oh, Ronan's review back. Then. Excellent. Thank, thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh, if there are any questions for me, you'll have to read them to me because as a Luddite, I'm doing this on my phone. So oh, I keep you look good. Okay. Uh, I thank my mom for that. So. <laughs> well, Normie Nerd is going to have to see uh, how much he spent on my questions before he can back you guys. So. <laughs> well. Listen, I will. Uh, I will. I will defer to Graham's plushies any day of the week, and uh, and then we'll go from there. So, I can't uh, yell at you, Normie nerd. <laughs> you know. And I would ask anybody who's seeing what they like, if you are backing us, we we sincerely appreciate it. But also, you know, get the word out. You know, your networks are are beyond our networks. So if you got you know five people, ten people who you think are going to dig that description or going to dig this kind of grindhouse, supernatural, fun, uh, you know, sort of road trip to hell and back sort of feeling uh, from what you're seeing, hit them up, you know, get them excited about it. Uh, it would be deeply appreciated just to point them to, uh, to what we're doing. And then they can decide for themselves if they see some things that uh, they're into. Right. Exactly. Exactly. This is a, a fun story. It's got great artwork. Coloring is awesome. Who did the lettering, by the way? I, I didn't ask about that. That was uh, Pat Brousseau, so, oh, okay. uh, who was recently nominated for an Eisner, so, uh, which he did not win. But he's uh, I've known Pat for a while, uh, and he's a you know really uh, great letterer. And we had some fun with him and opened it up to him because Carl was really into the um, 
you know, the open balloon shapes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, with no borders on it, which was another little yeah, sort of aspect I've, we took took on. I've been really weird about wanting the book to have its own look. Mm -hmm. And Pat waded in with a kind of an interesting Euro vibe where it's like, hey, what if I do these? I'm experimenting with these, these uh, borderless balloons. And I'm like, mm -hmm. yes. And so we did that. And I'm gonna have to drop my bad habit of occasionally doing panels that have a white background. <laughs> so, so there's a little a little technical hitch that punched me in the face. I'm like, oh hey, I can't be lazy here. So uh, because what happened? You know, is the word balloon that has a color. Yeah, oh, what do you have to do? Background. You had to to do those balloons in a very subtle kind of grayscale to pop yeah. them off that page. Mm -hmm. So you know, that's one of those things where I went, oh, okay, don't do that again. I'll make sure he has something to lay that balloon on that'll mm -hmm. that'll contrast it let me so, ask you guys a question yeah thought balloons or captions um in the captions uh i've 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 made the shift i think i made the shift to captions a long time ago uh -huh. um but uh and it's always it flows better for me okay. um well, are you going back to thought I like, uh, it depends, you know, again, it depends on what the story is you're telling. Yeah. Uh, a story, if, if like a, a Spider-Man story, say. I mean, one of the things that makes Spider-Man unique is his internal monologue. Mm. And, yeah. and the word balloons, to me, make it much more um, um, immersive into his right. thoughts versus, versus uh, caption boxes. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to always use them, but there are, is a time and a place for uh, thought balloons. I think uh, where I'd like to see them. I'd have to see that, like make a make a you know experiment with that and think about that because one of the things that I had asked Carl to do, or at least I said I was going to do, um, and wrote myself into a few corners with this was I wanted the story to always be from Percy's point of view, which it is. So there's no point where we cut away or there's no point where any there's no point anything is experienced that she's not experiencing it directly mm -hmm. which felt important to me to kind of have that that go on so it would have been easier to cut away to something or have this character describe that or or illustrate that but that's a kind of an interesting place where now i'm using these you know the stacked you know captions you know right. uh, percy's inner monologue but I'm wondering if the thought balloons would work it that way. I've, Thank you. Thank you for that extra back. I've liked Dan's writing that he, he's a been a dialogue and captions guy. And I like it's it's a more cinematic kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. And our project is more like a movie or more mm -hmm. like a, like an HBO series. Mm -hmm. So, and what that does also is if you have inner monologue, with, you know, you've got thought balloons from this character, it's also a lot of slop in that if I don't do the storytelling right, you can fix that. <laughs> so Sometimes. it puts me on the spot <laughs> and it makes me make sure I got the storytelling as dead on as possible because, well, Around the end of art school, I got introduced to Tim Truman, and Tim Truman, you know, dropped some stuff on me like, draw it as if the whole thing's going to be painted orange, mm -hmm. now, which is a Kubert school thing. And he, uh, his, he, you should be able to follow all of that with no dialogue. You know, there are nuances that you'll miss, but my goal is to be able to do it to where you could at least follow through and and see where you're supposed to see and look at what you're supposed to look at and then dan like make sure all the information they need is written in such an interesting way that it that it flows so uh yeah kind of keeps me on my toes yeah. Uh, I, I would like to toss that question out because I'm always curious because they, they seem to have disappeared about 20 years ago, uh, the, the thought balloons. And, uh, yeah. um, you know, when you read all of them, you see them. It's and, everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, 
there's a there's a charm to it that I like. Mm -hmm. that, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I think that there's a place for them at times. So. I think it's, it makes you have to make it feel like it's part of the identity of the book, like right from the get go, probably. And if it's, that's the case, then right. that charm, um, which it was, because, you you know, when we read those comics, we didn't think twice about it. We just we just figured that's part of the world. Mm -hmm. But you sort of have to, like, establish, I think, that identity right up front and then not. I wouldn't necessarily think you could mix and match it very well. You know, somebody yeah. said in the comments that maybe captions are great for narration, which I'm assuming they're thinking. That's like omniscient narration, you know, yeah. and then the thought balloons or the inner dialogue or the inner monologue, rather. But I'm not quite sure how it would work if we had one character trying to both communicate through, you know, um, monologue captions and thought balloons at the same time. It might get confusing. But right. I agree. It would be it would be cool to sort of play that out. But, you know, it would be fun. You do like a tower of a, a tower of Babel story. And yeah, everybody talks different things. You know, some, somebody talks okay. in captions, somebody talks in God. balloons, somebody talks in word balloons. So, you know, when <laughs> I amazing when I edited Martial Law, um, the great Pat Mills, Kev O'Neill series, you know, about back in Epic, you know, they introduced like two or three characters in the first issue, and Pat and Kevin were like, um, Hey, can we have two, you know, two or three different colors and caption shapes for these characters? And Phil Felix was the, the letterer. And I said, you know, great. Um, then by the, the second or third issue, they had 15 new characters. <laughs> and they wanted like every every new character to have a different color and shape of the caption. Right. I thought, of course, A, it would never work and Phil would have killed me. So, you know, we had to like rein that in. And I, and that, but that was definitely getting to Tower of Babel uh, yeah. territory really That's quickly. Funny. So nuts. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to wrap her up here. Um, thank you. And uh, just want to thank everybody in the chat. Thanks to everybody who had backed this again. Share this out on your social media. And um, uh, that's how we get independent comics going, you know. And, Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we, 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 we can't do it without you guys. So um, much appreciated. Uh, my thanks to, to Dan and Carl uh, for sharing their uh, wonderful project with us. And uh, we'll see you next time. Have a thank great you, time. It's been great.